Am I the a-hole stories? Would I be the a-hole if I sued my boyfriend's elderly mother and pressed charges against her? Okay, I know how this sounds. Please hear me out at least. I've been with my boyfriend for 11 years, since I was 15. His mother has hated me since the first day she met me. She hated me due to my ethnicity, cause of an Albanian, she hated me due to my career, I work as a model and she decided that makes me an empty-headed, vain, shallow person. Then when I told her I still planned to go to university alongside my career, she said I was doing it to impress my boyfriend. I've since left uni with a distinction, and her new reason to hate me is. I try too hard? She has also insisted I've cheated on him throughout our entire relationship, which is a ridiculous claim. I've never even kissed another man in my whole life. I have zero desire to cheat and never will. Late last year, she attempted to void the insurance on my boyfriend's motorbikes, she tried to do this under my name, so hypothetically, when he was arrested for riding with no insurance and called his insurance company, I'd get the blame. After this happened, my boyfriend and I agreed to cut her out. However, it hasn't stuck, she left my boyfriend alone and respected his wishes for no contact, but she's continued to contact and harass me. This leads to the last few weeks. My boyfriend works as a motorcycle test rider, and he got in an awful motorbike crash while working. As such, I now need to care for him. I'm okay with that, and I'm focusing on seeing it as an opportunity for us to get closer, it's been nice honestly. However, his mother has been awful to me. She's called me litany of terms. From things as tame and stupid, to things as awful as a nasty Serbian half-breed. I'm not Serbian, and she's well aware that calling a Kosovan a Serb is offensive. I tried to block her, so she started making new iMessage accounts, and began to continuously harass me via those accounts. Then came Friday night. The police turned up at our door. I was pretty confused and was quickly told they were there to do a welfare check, as they'd received multiple claims of horrific abuse I was apparently putting my poor boyfriend under. Obviously, they quickly discovered he was fine, albeit grumpy and they left. I know for a fact it was his mother, some of the details the police mentioned made that obvious. I'm now at a point where I've realized I literally cannot do this. I'm going to press charges against her for the insurance and harassment, it's a crime in the UK, and I'm likely going to sue her for damages, for the sake of my mental health, I need to do this. I don't want to be a victim and she needs to be forced to stop. I have mentioned my intentions to her if she doesn't back off, and she's pretty much mocking me and saying I won't. I absolutely will. I just feel like this morally may make me an awful person. She sucks, I know this. However, she's old and miserable enough as it is, and I feel like doing this may ruin whatever small amount of life she has left. It feels like it may be too far. I really don't know though, and I genuinely cannot be objective here. Would I be the a-hole here if I did this? Edit, when I say I need to care for my boyfriend, I mean he's essentially immobile, he's not being unsupportive, he's just barely able to take care of himself, let alone battle his mother too. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. This is getting dangerous. Maybe a restraining order? I've considered it. May have to go that route too. Get a locksmith on your doors and windows, and an old-timey stabby hairpin while you're at it. I really don't want to watch this recapped on forensic files. She's never even been in our house before. I'm not going to go into details on my house security for obvious reasons, but trust me, that's not a worry here thank god. Not the a-hole. His mother is abusive and becoming a danger to you and your boyfriend. You need to cut her out entirely and take some legal action. Figure out your best options and go from there. But this woman is a racist, vile, sickening lady. Yeah, I think you're right. We have already cut her out, she's contacting me via new iMessage accounts and emails etc. And yeah, she's 100% racist. I'm ethnic Albanian but I'm white, I've seen the way she treats people of color and it makes the way she treats me seem like a walk in the park. I genuinely hate her. Not the a-hole, but do discuss it with your boyfriend first. In my country, this would be slander and libel laws would apply. I'll definitely discuss it with him first. I know he'll agree, she's an awful person, and was an even worse mother to him. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to make peace with sister-in-law until she apologizes? Context husband, 29 male, and I, 26 female, were in the process of moving to a new apartment when the pandemic hit, and his parents invited us to stay at their place temporarily while we try to find other accommodations. We contribute to the household monetarily and by doing chores, etc. 
sister-in-law, 19, is back home from university, and has never liked me. I've tried to bond and talk to her, but she usually just slams the door in my face or blatantly ignores me. The in-laws and husband have tried to talk to her but she wants nothing to do with me, so I just stay out her way. Now, I occasionally get ingrown hairs down there, and just as luck would have it, I got two ingrown hair bump things that has been making it really painful and uncomfortable to wear panties. Usually what I do is that I go commando for a week or two, until the entire thing resolves itself, I spoke to my doctor, and she said if it works, just do it. Living with my in-laws makes that a bit awkward, so my husband gave me some of his basketball shorts to wear, I'm much much smaller than my husband, so the shorts offer the much needed air circulation. I try not to leave the home office when I'm wearing those shorts and panty less, but occasionally, I go to grab a glass of water or a snack from the kitchen. Yesterday, my sister-in-law overheard my husband making a joke about me being panty less while we were in the home office, door was closed, and me, also jokingly, saying that I'm saving a lot of time on laundry by going commando. That night, she abruptly asked me at dinner if her parents, my in-laws, know that I'm not wearing panties, and I was shocked. She went on to ask if it's a fetish or a cost-saving method. I saw her red, and told her that she is a petty, immature witch, and I'm done trying to be friends with her if she's just going to be a complete coon to me. My husband backed me up with extra yelling, which surprised her, husband usually dotes on her, and made her cry and leave the table. My in-laws were stunned into silence, but mother-in-law later asked me about it, and I explained the whole ingrown hair thing, which was embarrassing as hell. But she understood and related her own experience, which was comforting but also equally awkward slash embarrassing. I think she was trying to let me know that she's been there, done that, which was nice of her. There is obvious tension now because I feel embarrassed with the in-laws. Husband refuses to speak to sister-in-law which upsets her, and she says she can't focus on her classes when there's so much negative energy in the house, and she was genuinely curious. Father-in-law doesn't know what to do, so he just stays out of it and mother-in-law is just generally pretending it didn't happen. I feel bad for making things uncomfortable for father-in-law and mother-in-law, but I also want sister-in-law to apologize first before trying to make peace. Am I the a-hole for standing by that? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. It sure sucks putting your nose in someone else's business, and then suffering the consequences of your actions. Hopefully it's a lesson learned on her part. And she was genuinely curious. But let's be honest here. If she was just genuinely curious, she wouldn't have attacked you in the middle of a family dinner. She wanted to make a scene and she got it. Sucks for her that it backfired. Sounds like the sister-in-law is jealous of OP. OP's husband, her brother, normally dotes on her, so she likely feels OP steals his attention. She probably feels like you stole her brother, and are an interloper to the family, if there is no event that precipitated her rude treatment of you. Your husband needs to have a serious sit-down conversation with her, and ask her to explain why she takes issue with you. She won't want to answer, but he needs to tell her that you are his wife, so if she wants to continue behaving this way, it will permanently affect her relationship with him. He will not forget her behavior easily, so she needs to think about how she's behaving, and what she thinks it will achieve. 19 is old enough to buck up and be a civil adult. Sister-in-law sounds like an immature baby of the family who has been doted on too much. You're not the a-hole. She says she can't focus on her classes when there's so much negative energy in the house, and she was genuinely curious. She absolutely knows she was trying to embarrass you, and is now trying to deflect blame and play victim. She may have even convinced herself of this story too. Not the a-hole, but your husband is probably going to have to help with making amends here. He's the common bond between you two. Not the a-hole, but don't expect a sincere apology. She's childish and you got to see some of that firsthand. For the sake of your husband and in-laws, remain civil and courteous, but don't bother fostering a relationship until she gets over the shock of losing her brother to you. We're definitely civil and not going out of our way to be hostile or aggressive. The funny thing is that, husband and I have been married 5 years, so this shock is something none of us can understand. I've constantly attempted to keep her in involved in our lives, example, I insisted husband take her out for one-on-one, -on -one, brother sister time, but she just rejects me and is blatantly rude at other family occasions. Info, OP, any chance she's mad about not being the only girl in the family anymore? Actually, that's a great point. I've never considered it. The next story is titled. Am I the a-hole for not giving my brother a ride to work because he hid my ADHD medication? 
I, 19 male, still live at my parents' house and I'm taking online college courses. In middle school, I was diagnosed with ADHD, but my parents never wanted me on meds so I had to wait till I turned 18 to do it myself. I take Adderall every day, so today after having breakfast, I'm looking for my pills which I leave in my bathroom and they're not there. Then I started looking in my room getting pissed, because I knew for sure they were in my bathroom. My brother Theo, 20, was watching me from the hallway laughing when he saw me. He likes to be an A and does stupid stuff because it's funny to him, so I knew he probably did something. So I asked Theo where he put them, but he'd just laugh without telling me where they are. I don't know why he thinks doing something stupid like this is funny. I swear he's like 12. After a few minutes he tells me to calm down, and he goes to the closet in the hallway, but then he sees they're not there anymore. Theo swears that's where he hid them. We look all over the closet and can't find them. I'm so freaking angry and I tell Theo to find my meds now, or I'm not giving him a ride to work. He works at a store and supposed to open it in a half hour. That's when Theo gets more serious. He swears he doesn't know where they are. But I told him I don't care. Those pills aren't cheap without insurance, plus calling doctor's office for a refill, and I don't work enough hours to just buy more when that was a whole month worth. So yeah, I was so angry at him and didn't give him a ride. And also told him I won't be, unless he gives me my pills or money to buy more. Theo was begging me to go, but I shut my door and ignored him. He had to run and take the bus, but I heard he got there like almost an hour late. For sure got in trouble since he was the one in charge of opening the store. He was yelling at me when he got home, and my parents did too for purposely making him late because he didn't mean to actually lose my meds. My parents keep telling me I'm being too petty over this, and this affects his job. Everyone in the house seems to be really pissed with me, and I'm not sure if I took it too far with not giving him rides at all. I'm still really mad and worried about not finding my meds. I need those, so I don't know. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. Theo pranked you less than an hour before he needed a favor from you? Smooth. I hope you find your meds, and I hope your parents cut you some slack. If you had been able to take your meds this morning as usual, you would have felt clear-headed and able to drive. As it was, I don't blame you for passing. Besides how rude he was to hide them, and then to lose, or sell? See the well-gilded post immediately below, them, if you're used to being in a certain mindset brought on by regular, prescribed usage of meds, and then all of a sudden that's taken away, it's not a good idea to get behind the wheel. On all counts, you made the right decision. Theo can take his medicine. Not the a-hole. Good luck getting a replacement. Your meds are likely a schedule one and your doctor may not replace them, mine wouldn't when I once lost the script. You can report the theft of your meds, because it's a theft not a prank. Forgive me my suspicions, but medicines don't just disappear, though they often get stolen and sold on the street. No, OP's meds are Schedule 2. Schedule 1 substances are illegal for any reason, and cannot be prescribed, this is things like hero and coke. Schedule 2 substances are the most tightly controlled prescription drugs. Everything else though, agree. Not the a-hole taking meds is not funny. Querying though, you know your parents don't like them. Could they have found them and thrown them out? Good theory, but I'm pretty certain that Theo stole them and sold them to college kids. There's a high demand these days. I don't know. I don't think they would, but who knows. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for taking my car back? Back in October of last year, I was upgraded to a company car through my work. This left us with an extra car we had to make a payment on sitting in the driveway. I have a cousin. We will call him Dave. Dave has had a lot of problems with his life, he's been in and out of prison, and after his mom died, he fell hard into controlled substances. Word travels fast in my family, and everyone knew I had an extra car. Well, Dave called me up and asked me if he could use it. I talked with my wife and we decided if we make the insurance payment and keep it registered, all he has to do is make the car payment $165 bi-weekly. He had a job, so I decided I would do that. It's been three months since we gave him the car, almost four. I thought it would be smooth, but I have had to chase him and go knock on his door for every payment. He always paid it, but he wouldn't just come do it. It got very frustrating. Two days ago, he was arrested in my car. He had illegal stuff on him and was taken to jail. All the while, my car was ransacked by the police. Vents ripped out, inserts ripped out, just destroyed the interior. 
Upon further investigation, I noticed that over 30,000 miles have been put on the car in just short of four months. Infuriated at this point, I told my mom and other members of my family he wouldn't be getting the car back. I said this to them because he called me from jail and asked if I'd park it as his house. I said absolutely not, I'm taking it back and selling it. He hangs up, and then I begin getting berated by family for screwing him out of a car. Calling me an a-hole. But the car was in perfect condition before it went to him. Like detailed, clean, low miles. Looked like a rental. And now I have had it quoted and will probably lose my butt on it. I did him a favor and I got boned, and now I just need to understand how and if I'm truly in a hole. I feel I did my due diligence. Thanks for reading. Not the a-hole. The guy betrayed your trust whilst you were just trying to do him a favor. It's your car, so you should be able to take it back anyway, but he's clearly abusing that trust so you have the complete right to take it back. 30,000 miles within 4 months? Where was he going? From Florida to California? That's a 3,000 miles one way trip, 6,000 miles round trip. So he had to make 5 rounds trips from Florida to California. Is he a substance mule? This story rings true to the old adage, no good deed goes unpunished. Not the a-hole. You messed up by lending the car to a known addict with known trouble with the law. The car is in your name and you could face future issues if he continues to use it. What if he does something illegal, and then tries pinning it on you? Cut and run. This. My mom had her car stolen by someone my brother let stay at our house without our permission. He went to the local liquor store while drunk, and got into a really bad accident. Everyone survived, and the other driver had minor injuries in one hand, while the idiot that stole the car ended up with a broken jaw and a broken hip. The other driver is now suing my mom because it was her car. Not the a-hole. Feel like it's obvious but, not the a-hole. You still own it, he was renting it, and his actions practically destroyed the car. Only other real option is to offer him to buy it outright, for whatever it might have been worth before all that damage. He screwed you over dude, no clue what your family is thinking. If you knew my family, it's not an obvious answer. They baby an addict, and soon they'll bury the addict. Sorry, but you also babied the addict. You lent him your nice car lol. It's not overly nice. But it was a stupid idea that I got talked into. Naive for sure. Sadly, hard when they're on and off again. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.